We almost had a cappella uh, worship there. So on this day that we honor national independence, we come here and we show ourselves as an interdependent community of faith. Part of the walk of, walk of faith for all of us is to give up our own dreams and cravings and habits and the things that don't serve us well and find ourselves dependent on a God that follows us along through the shadows and into the light. And of course, there's plenty of reasons to be independent from the oppression of 1776 governments or 2021 hyper-capitalism or the own, th own things in our heart that break our lives and the eternal brokenness of racism and misogyny and all those things. Wonderful to be independent from those. But it'll only happen, that independence will only happen when we give ourselves over to the healing power of God in our life. Let us center ourselves for that journey with Tom's Piano.
And immediately it's time for the children's sermon. So kids, come on up as fast as you can, fast as you can. You're allowed to run in church today. She used in the story. Did you hear it three times? I used it also. Did you? What word did Maria use? Immediately. Immediately. Do you, what does that mean? It means like immediately, very soon. Very soon. As soon as it happens, right now. Um, there are so many things that feel like they have to happen right now. It's time to get up right now. It's time to eat breakfast right now. You have to get on the bus right now. You have to come to church right now. You have to come to the children's sermon right now. Kids, do you ever feel like people are just rushing you around? Yeah. Adults? Uh-huh. Kids, do, do you ever feel like someone else is always in charge? Uh-huh. Adults? Yeah. yeah. Do, do you ever feel like, it, wouldn't it be nice if you could stop and you could be the boss? No. You don't want to do it? <laughs> Adults? A lot of responsibility being the boss. In the story you just heard, Jesus was moving fast immediately to help people. But nowhere does God say we should move fast. Jesus was in charge so that people felt safe. But when Peter thought he was in charge, he fell down. I've fallen down before. You've fallen down before. When we think we're in charge, sometimes we fall. Jesus even told the wind, stop. But God never expects us to do things that aren't in our control. So maybe we can leave the big things to God, like being scared. And maybe we can have control over the things that we have control over, like being kind to each other. We're going to pray, and I'm going to teach you all how I, I like to pray. I say a few words. You all get to, everyone gets to repeat to me. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God help us to trust, help us to trust your, timing, your timing and your love. And your love. Amen. Amen. All right. You get to go back and sit with your people. Jesus said, come on. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Learned long ago, the best advice for preachers is sermons can't, oh, I just broke that. That just happened. <laughs> <laughs> is that a harbinger to come? Let's see, Cam, can we rip this one off too? Let's see. Lundquist, I hope you can still hear me up close. If you can't hear, you can move around. There's probably some spiritual metaphor in that. If you can't hear where you're at, it's probably just a quiet zone in the church, maybe in your heart, move somewhere else. The best advice I ever heard as a preacher is sermons can't all be good, but they can always be short. So, uh, Carol, don't pay me for the word today. We'll get through this one quick. Um, how many of you remember how to ride a bicycle? Remember, how many of you remember learning that process? Mine was only a few years ago. I didn't learn to ride a bike till I was 31. It was a lot harder at that age than some of the young ages. How many of you remember teaching someone to ride a bike? Ah, a lot of hand, a lot of happy hands and memories just came up. First, there's the training wheels, and, and you hold them there, and, you, and you're walking along, and then maybe you're running along, and there is some boo-boos to kiss and scrapes to heal up, but eventually, parents, guardians, you hold that seat, you're running alongside, you give it that push, there's a little bit of fear, there's a little bit of pride, you're smiling as they, ah, they don't even know you're not there, and then they fall down and they look at you in that terror and you run up to them and you say, oh. not a parent. No, w when your kids fall down, learning something new, you don't scold them. You don't point out their mistakes. You bend down. Many of you have been in this situation, not just bicycles. You get close. You say, you're doing so well. You're almost there. We are going to get there together. You, you're doing great. You are great. Someone might have done that for you with a bike or with the breath of God learning how to pray, learning how to listen to the guidance of the Spirit. Or they helped you to relax your shoulders and sit better in the shadows of a chaotic world. And you aren't perfect at any of that, 
But look where you've come. Look where you are today. There are still messes that we all have to clean up, falls that you have to pick yourself up from, falls that God may help you up from. But you've come so far, from way over there with little faith, to stepping closer and closer to a God of grace, to a heart of love, to a walk of peace. And how do we get there? With bikes or breath or healing the brokenness? It wasn't all you. It wasn't your wisdom. It, it wasn't all mostly you. There are no spiritual libertarians in the world. It wasn't all your friends that helped you or your parents that helped you. It wasn't all your uh, failures and the successes and the lessons you learned. All that stuff played a something, but somewhere weaved through it all is a spirit that lifts you up, a spirit that laid a path, and a spirit that invites us all along and that cheers us on. Oh, you have a little bit of faith. Look where that's carried you. Imagine what more faith can do. You have some trust. Imagine what dreams may come true with a deeper trust in a living God. You who waver between humility and hubris, imagine what could happen. Just, just one more step, just one step closer, one moment of prayer, one more heartbeat of patience before you react. What could happen if we know God that much deeper? And if we know that we are not alone, but we are right there in the care of a loving God. Amen.
So what things do we want to do immediately? I am sure you want to get rid of these. Many of you do. Um, fact is, the CDC, health team might, might be following all this close. They still recommend it for churches. We're just like the last group because we sing. Would you rather sing with a mask or not sing without a mask? You might have a different decision, but we're going to keep these until like, the CDC. There's also some industry groups that tell churches, you know, what the best strategies are. We're, our health team is following that. I'm sure we're close to softening some things, but uh, we're not ready for right now to get rid of these yet. Um, right now, I told the children that you don't have to do right now everything, but pastors love to preach and not follow their own advice. So um, I have been here two months at Community Grace. It's been a great start. Thank you. And it's been busy. It has been busy. Things happen all the time. We've done so much. We've accomplished so much. There's been a lot of right now energy in the office, maybe too much. Um, but we haven't been able to do everything. We just haven't yet. And um, so many of us, we want to uh, cross off everything on our to-do list. Does anyone ever get to do that every week? It doesn't happen to me. I, I never get all of them crossed off. So here's what's next for the church, what, whatever we get crossed off. We are gathering some ministry teams, some groups of people who care about certain mission and justice, children's education, youth education, how to grow together as a faithful community. We're going to consider all the little stuff of music licenses and technology in here and technology in meetings so we can Zoom with people who aren't ready and how do we do communion and uh, when can we take these things off and it's a lot to learn about how to do God's Word in a new world. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to learn that. Um, I trust that we're going to get there. We're going to get back to something normal. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I trust that because God has invited us and has uh, walked and lent a hand. And whatever we do, it's not going to happen immediately, but it's going to happen together and it's going to happen with God. So you're invited to join a team, uh, to follow us on social media, to broaden our scope to the community, to celebrate these steps forward, to forgive with the hesitations that happen. This thing, Cam, Cam might be mad about it, but I don't even know. I blame the funeral home yesterday. They did something to this, I'm sure. Um, but the energy that you put in now very well may, may be the most important energy we have in this church so that when we are called from the boat into the waves, the boat's rocking, so eventually we're going to be called into the waves. And the energy you put in now and that momentum may carry us to be able to do more than you ever imagined. So friends, if this community of faith has ever been a spiritual momentum for you, if you trust that it can be for this neighborhood and this community, I invite you to offer a gift. We have a basket in the back. We have an online button on our website. You can send a check to the P.O. box. Anyone who has given financially, we thank you, and we thank God for leveraging those gifts for the betterment of this community. And for the offertory, I invite Kathy to come up.
If you call us to the fire, you will not withdraw your hand. Gaze into the flames and look for you. If you say step out on the water and they say it can't be done, fix our eyes on you and we will Our prayers today, and I always do invite you, whether it's uh, folks watching online to put a comment there or to send me an email, whether it's you have something and there's a little purple forms in the back, you're welcome to hand off to me or grab me after the service. Uh, those prayer requests, we'll, we'll find a way when we can get back to a normal worship where I can have those before this time, but with our split hybrid thing, I'm going to pray and we're going to hold the things in your heart together. Between the alarm and our to-do list, your blessing. Between the mirror and our reflection, your delight. We give thanks for the joy that we know and the joy that surrounds sublime. Between the tools that we hold in our hands, your creativity. Between the keyboard and our fingers, your wisdom. We ask for your guidance to follow a path of trust, not because life is always easy, but because trust is the better path that makes life something we can accept, maybe something we can appreciate, hopefully something in which we can thrive. Between those we care for and our efforts, your grace. Between the fork and the plate, your pro providence. We pray that comfort be given to those who hunger and hurt, those who grumble and grieve. Between our questions and responses, your presence. Between the pillow and our head, your peace. This we pray together and with all creation through the words that you taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not let us fall into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are together in prayer, and we are together with folks online. Let's uh, stand up and give the pa pass the peace to them on the camera there. The peace of Christ be with you. Now, instead of our typically, you've been in a, in a rhythm where now you do some benediction, you sing the amen, all that good business, and, and, and it's been a while since we've had communion. Um, is the bread back there? It's on its way. Okay, we're, we're walking good, good. So, um, some Sundays in, in many churches, communion is something that is reflective and it is pensive and it is quiet. Other churches, Communion is a celebration. You celebrate the Lord's Supper, and there's dancing down the aisles. Um, you who want to stay in the boat because you're scared to get out. You who get out of the boat and fall down. You who are demanding that you're going to drive the boat and no one else is. All of you are invited to this table. All of you are invited to God's grace. You are all entrusted somewhere to invite to something more. You are invited to do this in remembrance of him, to do this remembering that Jesus welcomed all. I looked up the Greek. You know what the word all means in Greek? All. <laughs> do this remembering that mercy envelops us all. Do this remembering that you are called. Do this remembering that the Spirit sustains you from this place. Now, how do we do this? in a world with COVID, with all this and all that. Um, I'm not gonna break the bread because we wanna let you touch the food you eat. Make sense? So it's gonna be all on there in the, in, in the back. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do the words of institution down here. Pour the symbolic juice right in there. Uh, we're gonna then have a song. I'll sing the first verse. Tom's just gonna play it. He's just gonna keep playing it until all of you get out of here. Uh, because through those doors, there's gonna be bread and there's gonna be juice. 
So while Tom is still playing the post lute, it is still our service of worship. So you can go on outside, take off your mask outside, uh, eat communion, reflect however you will, and celebrate that a God of mercy goes with you. So, so, so long ago, Jesus was hanging out with his best friends. The pictures all have men in them, but there were men, there were women. Hanging out with his best friends. By him, some who he was frustrated by. And he took bread and he broke it and he said, the world is so broken. I'm not running away from the brokenness. There are people in your life who have run away from your brokenness. I'm in there with you. Bob is part of your brokenness. I'll meet you there. And he took the cup and he poured it out. I'm giving my life. I'm pouring out my life to be part of this journey with you. The world tells you all the time that there's this deal. You do enough, you get enough. The world tells you that all the time. It just drives it in. You do enough, you get enough. If you don't do enough, you don't get enough. I got a new deal for you is what Jesus said. It's called grace. It's called mercy. It's called forgiveness. It's called God reaching out to you before you reach out to God. It's a place to be before you know what you believe. It's a place to belong before you know who you belong to. It's a place to fit and have a purpose. All are invited to this table. All are invited to those gifts. People will stream from east and west and north and south to come to the mountain of the Lord because this matters. And so we do this in remembrance. joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, of Jesus to recall in love down for me, in love laid down for me. Come receive the gifts of God.